Hello, I am Brett Knowles from PM Squared Consulting. This short video introduces how you can use the 7Geese OKR software package to implement the concepts embodied in the Balance Scorecard framework. I assume that you already have good familiarity with 7Geese, and this video is not intended as a 7Geese training video. So first, let's do a quick refresher on the Balance Scorecard. The concept behind the Balance Scorecard is providing a view of the four key perspectives on organizational performance. Financial, what are financial goals and how well are we meeting those? Internal, what are internal processes, how well are they performing? Customers, what do our customers want and how we're meeting those needs? And learning and growth, which uh, came from the work we we're doing with Peter Senge, taking a look at how organizations learn and organizations grow. Now, this framework got modified into a common tool that we call the strategy map that tries to draw the cause and effect relationship between objectives. So in the private sector, our goal is to achieve financial success. To do that, we need to make our customers happy. To make our customers happy, we need the right internal processes. And to have the right internal processes, we need the right enablers, competencies, culture, and enabling structures. And so within the Balanced Scorecard framework, we should be able to answer our strategic goals within this framework. So a common example that's used is some early work we did with Southwest Airlines. In Southwest Airlines, if we ask ourselves a question of what's going to drive operating efficiency, the answer was more customers on fewer planes. So as a strategy map, we draw it like this. If we had more customers and fewer planes, we would enjoy increased profitability. Well, that's the financial goals. What do our customers want? Well, uh, simply put, there's a segment of customers that wanted low ticket price and on-time arrivals. So our hypothesis looks like this. If we had more on-time flights, we'd get more passengers. And if we had a lower ticket price, we'd also get more passengers. Now, it's important to note that these objectives work in conjunction with each other. So we're looking at how to have fewer planes, lower ticket price, and more on-time flights. And those objectives appear to conflict with each other. How Southwest solved the problem is, with their internal processes, focus on faster turnaround time. So if we could turn the planes around faster, it means we could operate with fewer planes, which means more planes would be um, on time because we can turn them faster. And between fewer planes and on-time flights, we can offer a lower ticket price or increased margin to attract more passengers. And underpinning that was all about educating and compensating people for cycle time reduction. So this is a strategy map a core tenet of the balance scorecard. The next thing we need, need to do is to prioritize these objectives. So by the time uh, year five rolled around, we had the principal waiting 50% between fast turnaround time and on-time flights. So to begin with, we had a high waiting on process redesign. That was like 50%. And then once people got trained on it, we began to see some operational benefits for the training. And then by year five, we moved the uh, key indicators and priority up to seeing some financial benefits. Now, those are our strategic goals that we need to capture inside of Seven Geese and our priorities. Now, it's important to note that uh, as we cascade the strategy from corporate down to different departments, each department might have a different set of objectives, which talks about what their role is to contributing to strategic success. So in this case, we might have an objective like fast turnaround time. We should be able to see how each department supports that. So for example, maintenance needs to repair the planes by replacing parts. Operations, maybe they need to cross-train everyone. Sales, maybe their job is to attract the right customers. And then finally, service, enable self-help. They all have different goals that link up to the corporate goal. Again, we need to build this framework inside 7 Geith. Finally, once we understand our goals and the priorities, we need to put in the KRIs or key results areas and metrics into the scorecard tool.
Let me show you what the end product looks like. Here we see a scorecard with each of the four perspectives outlined and within each of the four perspectives the strategic goals. In fact, within each of the strategic goals we can then drill into the cascaded objectives which roll up. So that's the overall goal we're going to head towards. Let's break down the steps. Basically there are four steps. First we need to create the four perspectives and use them as labels inside the tool. Second, to create an organizational objective for each of the strategic goals from the strategy map. Third, adjust the priorities across all those strategic goals to match the strategic priorities from the strategy map. And then finally, create the drill down, the departmental and personal objectives for each of the supporting activities. So, the first step, create the four perspectives as labels. We need a way to organize our objectives into the four perspectives and inside 7 Geese we have the concept of labels. So to create the labels in 7 Geese, if we just go into Organization Settings, within that you select Objectives. And then within Objectives you can create the labels that you want. The labels are pretty straightforward to set up you merely put in their name but color you would like them to be and save. Now what I've done is I've also numbered them and I've done this so that when several, seven geese shows them to us they show them in the sequence I would like. So I create an overall category for corporate so I can add up all the objectives and then I have each of the four perspectives from the balance scorecard numbered from top to bottom. Secondly, we need to create those organizational level strategic goals. There are several places within Seven Geese where you can add in new objectives. The screen I'm looking at is achieved by clicking on the objectives header and then choosing new objective. Now within my objectives I always number them by the perspective and you can see here it tries to intelligently guess what the objective is that we're creating. Since I've already created drive sales I'll just create a sample one that I can delete later. And if I want, I can put in specific key results against this objective. Now later on, I may also create some children, some drill down metrics associated with it. So in this case, if I have an objective like drive sales, I might have a, a, a result like uh, and again, we're trying to use a smart objectives here. So we want to make sure that it's uh, specific, measurable, attainable, and so forth. And so in this case, I'm going to say for this quarter or this cycle, I want sales revenue that's greater than, let's say, uh, I have no idea, $10 million. And then over here, I can establish the unit of measure. So in this case, I'm going to choose dollars, and I want to range from zero revenue up to let's say 20 million because that's as high as we can go. And I can do other things like set reminders. More importantly, I'm going to look for additional details where I can put in the description. In this case, we're going to link it to the perspective. In this case, that's a financial objective. And it has no, um, I guess that's untrue. The parent this has is that overall corporate objective. So I can, I've previously created that objective. I can put it in as a parent. I'm not going to worry about children yet. Now this is an important step. We're going to change it from being a personal objective to being an organizational objective. And you see it then earns a purple icon. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. So that's all there is to creating a corporate objective. And you can see here it shows that 
we've got the corporate results and then this is one of the children. Now I'm just going to quickly show you what that looks like. If I go back to that overall organizational view, you'll now see that I've added in a second objective of drive sales that shows up here. Now I'm going to delete this because I don't want it, but you can see how easy it is to create that parent that relationship inside of the perspective. So we just repeat this process for each of the strategic goals. Third, we need to adjust the priorities across all of those strategic goals to reflect those from the strategy map and even the cascaded strategy maps. Again, there are several areas within Seven Geese where you can adjust weighting. I find the easiest one to get to is if I go into cycles and then within cycles it's important that you choose the right period so if I choose the quarter that we're working on I can just select adjust weighting within the objectives now I'm just going to minimize the screen on the right we have the strategy map that we're working on before and on the left, we have the list of objectives currently linked to me. And we have already adjusted the weighting. So the weighting adjustment is pretty straightforward. I can just take any of these objectives and adjust the weighting to where I want it to be. Now, what Seven Geese does is automatically shifts them relative to each other. So they add up to 100%. Now, some of the objectives I've put in, I don't want to wait. So, for example, increased profitability has no weighting in the traditional scorecard for Southwest. And then the other ones, I've approximated the weighting just by sliding them until the proportion is roughly correct in according to the strategy map. So this is pretty straightforward. It comes out with um, a pretty good approximation of what the weighting is and allows you to shift this quarter on quarter based on what shifts in strategy might occur. Now I should touch on for a moment where the weighting impacts us in Seven Geese. So if I go back to the objectives view, what I see is it provides for me what my overall performance is, in this case 49. Now the 49% is based on the weightings across these objectives. So as we've set the weightings on each of these, it looks at the performance of each of these objectives and based on the weighting calculates the overall strategic performance level. So in this case, if you recall, I had a 0% weighting next to increased profitability based on the strategy map. So this 10% has no impact on this 49. But these two are weighted based on what I just showed you and therefore contribute to this overall performance level of 49%. Finally, we need to create the cascade, the departmental and personal objectives for each of the supporting activities, be they be processes or projects. So let's say I wanted to add a new child objective to on-time flights. Again, within the objective menu, I'm going to choose new objective. And in this case, I'm going to create one that is related to on-time flights which might be something like um, and maybe it might be um, something like uh, jetway within 10 minutes. A jetway is a thing that attaches onto the side of the plane and this is going to be another number. Now we want 10 minutes, but here's an interesting issue. This is a case where high numbers are bad. So let's take the worst case, let's say a 20 minute delay down to zero. Now in this case, it will give us a better score the closer we are to 20 minutes. 
And again, we can do more options. In this case, we're going to outline their parent, which happens to be, I think we chose uh, on time flights. So now I've chosen that as a parent. Uh, it doesn't have any children. I've created this as a personal objective. Maybe I'm going to set it up as a department. Uh, and then away we go. So now we've created a child objective and I'll just show you what that looks like. So now you can see we have a little charrette here indicating there's a drill down and if I drill down I get to the jetway clearance on time. Now I did touch on this being a unique situation where low values are good. Let's just do a quick check-in. So in this case uh, let's pretend we're actually at, let's say, seven minutes, which should be a good score. Give myself an on-track status. And you can see it's at 65%. Now, just to show you how this low values are good works, let's change that number and pretend that it's uh, 19 minutes, and we should see a lower performance score. Right? So that's how low values go. This is the parent-child relationship. So while we're here, I want to touch on the second weighting technique inside of 7 Geeth. We took a look at how we weight the objectives, and that can get changed period by period, and in fact, person by person. Within the objectives, when we get into the key results, we can also set the weighting. So we can set the weighting across these children. Let's take a look at fast turnaround time. I've clicked in it so I can drill into it and here we can see the overall fast turnaround time. I have a key result overall. The overall hands-on time is less than 25 minutes and then I have the children. Now within the children I've got uh, faster ground time, faster fueling and fast galley servicing. I can adjust the weighting on each one of these but when I adjust it, it adjusts for everyone that uses this objective called fast turnaround time. So, and I can scale the weighting for each of these from highest to no effect. And if I change them, you'll see that it gives me a little symbol to indicate. Now, based on the icons, I can see their relative importance in the roll-up, and they impact this weighting. I hope this was a useful summary for you. Please join us for other videos on how to use 7 geese effectively in your organization.